up, DJ Sterling back with another video and today we'll be talking about Record Box 6. So Record Box 6 came out today. I downloaded it, I installed it. Um, it is an update, but it's a major version update. So it will not overwrite Record Box 5. It will install alongside of it. So you will have both 5 and 6 on your computer. Doesn't matter if you have Mac or PC. Um, if you're asking yourself, should you update to Record Box 6, the answer is yes. Um, I updated from Record Box version 5.8.5. Um, now it's just Record Box 6.0. And there were a couple of good features for me. Um, I'll tell you right away that Record Box 6, the emphasis is on the cloud, and I don't care about that. Um, the way I perform and the way I prepare my sets, it's just not something I need. I use such a small playlist. Um, a lot of DJs will take a collection of like, you know, a terabyte of music, analyze it, process it, you know, correct it, be everything to prepare this collection so they can just play on the fly. I don't do that. When I perform, it's very small, calculated sets. Um, club performances, everything, a wedding, everything uses a very small playlist. So I have a collection of music. I don't analyze all of it. Um, I will curate a set specifically for an event. And so my sets are typically, well, my playlist is typically one to 300 songs. That's it. Um, it usually takes me a couple of hours to go through and process that. You know, if I'm doing hip hop, maybe I need to set cues and maybe change beat grids and stuff like that. But Record Box is one of the better music management systems where when it analyzes music, um, the beat grid is usually right or pretty close. If you're using something such as en Engine Prime, then you're kind of out of luck for that because it's going to mess everything up <laughs> and you're going to spend a lot of time fixing that. So, um,. So yeah, so I downloaded the file. Um, it was about a quarter gigabyte, took about 10 seconds to download, had no issues. Double click the installer, I installed it, everything was fine. As soon as it finished, I launched Record Box 6. Um, I had a prompt pop up, I had to log in. There was a survey, I don't do surveys, so I skipped all of that. Um, I'm sure the software already has telemetry running in the background, which probably collects a little bit of data anyway and sends it back to Rekordbox so they can know, you know, how to improve stuff, what's, are, are people getting crashes all the time, um, how are people using the software, how can we make it better, so I'm not doing a survey. Um, um, if you look at the very fine print at the bottom of the screen, there's an option which says um, start Rekordbox 6 with an empty collection fine that's perfect and then um, you finally get to the user interface and ta-da everything looks exactly the same Bruh. Um, <laughs> which you know you would think they spent all this time refreshing the UI and adding features and um, there just aren't that many to be honest um, as far as plugins Nothing new came about, so that's the other thing. As soon as you start the software, it wants you to do two things. One is collect, it wants to convert your old collection to Record Box 6 format, and then two, it wants you to start logging into stuff, which means you have to have already had those accounts set up. In Flight, Dropbox, SoundCloud Go. The, these programs are not built into Record Box 6 um, the way you would think. Like, for me, um, I was hoping if I was using cloud stuff that Rekordbox had its own cloud services, but it doesn't. It just kind of uses third-party stuff, and it's only one stuff, which is Dropbox. And if you want to use Dropbox, you can't just open a browser and use it that way. You have to actually download the Dropbox desktop application to your computer, which I'm also not going to do. And so... I'll probably miss out on some of these cloud features. Um, but the one thing I did immediately do was when I opened Rekordbox and I dropped 
a few um, tracks into a playlist. I had them analyze, and it looks like it took a little bit longer to analyze, which is kind of fine because I analyze such a small bit at a time, and I think it's actually collecting more data, like producing more metadata about each audio track. And the next thing I did was I went to the preferences uh, option menu, and then I went to the, I think it's a waveform or view tab, and then I scrolled down, and now you have an option to colorize the waveforms, not just RGB and there's something else, but now you can add, um, so now you can add three band waveforms, and basically when you do that, you look at the waveform, now it looks just like you're looking at a waveform in Denon uh, Engine Prime, which is actually quite nice because having three band, you can see the highs, the mids, and the lows on a single waveform colorized. And maybe um, you're looking for um, a cue to set to start dropping a track, and maybe you want to scratch, you don't want to do highs, maybe you want to find a bass sound or something to kind of baby drop it in there. Uh, you can see that very clearly. You can see a lot of information with this enabled by just looking at the waveform. So, so far that's the only useful feature I've gotten out of Rekordbox 6. Um, so yeah, as soon as you start the software, they want you to start logging into stuff. This is where everything goes wrong for me because I don't like the subscription-based model. I have Rekordbox 5, I have two controllers that came with licenses, I have the DDJ400 here, and I also have the XDJ RX2, both came with Rekordbox licenses, allowing the full-blown performance mode, and I've already spent all this money on hardware and software, and now upgrading to Rekordbox 6 to get all of the features that they offer to be creative. I have to pay more money, and I think the subscription starts at $9.99 a month or something like that, or, no, sorry, they have different tiers of subscription, and, you know, the top tier is so much a month, maybe maybe the top tier was $9.99 a month, and that includes all of the cloud stuff, and I think maybe Ableton Link, and all, all this other stuff is included in the top tier, um, but out of that, very few of those features. I'm actually interested in using. And again, um, everything is a, subs a separate subscription. And so to use SoundCloud Go, you have to already have an account, which means you're paying a subscription with SoundCloud, which for me, I have SoundCloud Pro, which I think is 10 bucks a month, and then Go Plus on top of that, because um, I upload a lot, Pro gives me that unlimited space, and I think it also provides the higher quality audio playback. Um, and then Go Plus gives me access to more music plus the integration with Rekordbox where I can stream from you know the Rekordbox and a controller. So um, that's an additional $4.99. So that's $15.99 or 15 bucks I'm paying a month for the SoundCloud feature. And then um, if you want to use Dropbox you get two gigabytes with a free account, which is not a lot of space. Even if you're just storing metadata, um, if you do try to back up any of your actual audio files, two gigabytes will go very quickly, especially if you're playing high quality music on your controllers. It could be 500 songs or it could be you know 200 songs. It just all depends on the quality and the length of your music, but that's not a lot. You know, if you're trying to sync a collection with the cloud. So um, that means you'll have to upgrade to a paid account where I think it starts at maybe 10 bucks a month. And then that gives you two terabytes worth of space, which is much better. But now you're paying a Dropbox subscription. And then there's another um, service record box encourages you to get, which is called Enfile. And this is just like a distribution platform, and it allows you as a creator to share your uh, music with an audience. Um, and I think that starts at like 30 pounds, and I'm here in the United States, so that's like $38. And then um, it's like a, you know, if I pay with a credit card or something, 
I got to pay a foreign exchange fee on top of that. So it's like 40 something bucks uh, per month. That's the starting fee. And then, so there's all these different services added, but it's just so much money where before I just had record box and I had SoundCloud. I already had SoundCloud um, before I was using record box because I like SoundCloud. I'm also a producer. And so I went ahead and got those accounts um, set up and that was fine. Um, I would have liked if Rekordbox came with those streaming services built into their subscription model. And so you log into your Rekordbox as you do the first time after installing the software. And then you have access to, you know, Beatport and SoundCloud Go Plus and InFile and everything for that one fee that you pay and it's all tied to your record box account. That would have been a much better idea and I was kind of expecting that. And the other thing too was um, when before, I was gonna make a video about this spec speculating but I'm glad I didn't because I would have been wrong. But I thought that since record box was moving to a subscription based model that that subscription fee would in fact include a um, subscription to a, a, serv a streaming service and I was hoping that streaming service would be Spotify especially since I think one of those other programs there's so many music management programs but I think it's like virtual DJ or something maybe actually is or was integrated with SoundCloud um, you can correct me in the comments, I can't remember, there's so many, but it was integrated and they cut that tie and I thought, oh great, this is perfect because Rekordbox is due for an update and maybe they're taking that partnership with Spotify. Wrong, nobody is. So <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but I'm kind of disappointed. So I was also hoping that um, this revision of Rekordbox would come with a lot of like bug fixes performance updates and feature updates and like I said so far the only benefit I found after using it for the first hour was the fact that my waveform can now show um, the, the three band waveform where I see all of this extra data colorized for me um, and that's actually pretty cool um, one feature that I really really hope Pioneer or Rekordbox fixes is um, like I said, I plug this controller up to a computer, the DDJ400, I analyze and I go pre-process my entire set. And I would love to use export mode with phrases, but for some reason, when you try to declutter your workspace to use export mode, a lot of data goes away, including those phrases. And the reason I like export mode is because it's the only way I know where I can look at a single track waveform and it's actually large enough to look at the very small details of that waveform. As soon as you go back to performance mode, you typically get two tracks and you can probably tell one to go away, but then it's still small and hard to see everything. You do have phrases, but unfortunately, I mean, that's the only way I know how to edit those phrases, um, which for me are great visual aids. But um, so that brings me to the second thing is that uh, the phrases are always wrong. <laughs> They're never right. So you always, all for me, I always, always have to edit those phrases. And what I'm talking about is if you go to performance mode, and then I think you have to go to your preferences and something about the waveform view, and you have to enable the option to see phrases. But under the waveform, you'll have this thin bar of various color segments, and um, you can label those segments, which are the different phrases, of a song. Um, so you might have an intro, a verse, a chorus, an outro, for example. And especially for hip hop or literally anything remixed, I always have to go fix the phrases. So it's just almost another step for me. It's a great, like I said, very good indicator, uh, like a visual cue um, to set those phrases correctly. Now, when transitions happen, I don't have to set cue points as visual cues. I can literally use the phrases to see like, okay, here's a mix out opportunity here. Here's, you know, 
the end of a verse and now we're in the chorus, I can do something interesting or here's the outro. So it's like a last opportunity to, you know, get my uh, transition set up so I can make that. Um, and so, yeah, um, should you upgrade to record box six? Yes. Um, if you have record box five, pretty much any, any controller that you purchase that came with a license, as soon as you hook it up to a computer with record box six, you will have performance mode. So you don't have to worry about losing that. Um, if you do upgrade to six, you don't lose any features. You only gain. And for me, I might subscribe to the cloud stuff for a little bit just to check it out, but I'm really not interested. I was hoping for more, but that was the big feature in record box six was the cloud integration and the third party services, which are kind of halfway supported, but not really, um, because they're not implemented by record box. So they're just accessible. So, um, cool. That's my video. I'm DJ Sterling. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.